Alright, welcome back guys. Now, before I get started today, I would like to address one question real quick that I received from one of my viewers regarding the last video where I built the lifted bed. It was basically asking me how the bed would behave in a lowered position when it comes to the sideways movements. Now, as you know, a, a boat is not always in a static um, level position. Of course, it moves with the movement of the water like waves or it might rock back and forward from the left to the right um, with the wind. And I did explain in a video how I can lock the bed in along one axis, but I didn't really explain what happens uh, regarding the other axis. So let me try to explain this real quick. As you can see by the way the brackets are positioned, there is really just one way to move and sideways movement is not really possible to start with. That being said though, I couldn't tighten those balls all the way, otherwise the frictional forces would overcome the forces needed to move the bed, so there is some wiggle room in the setup. But the second I'll lock the latches at the front, everything becomes very stable and even though it's not their main purpose, they do prevent lateral movement as well. Well, the bottom line is the bed is not going to swing uncontrolled from the left to the right as soon as the boat is on a little movement. It's fairly secure in place and I hope that answers the question. All right, now back to business. I decided to do the bathroom next and that is going to be a really big job. And I will have to spread this over multiple videos. Um, and yeah, this is going to be the first part of it. As usual, everything starts with milling my lumber from either a pile of scrap material or literally from a tree. Now, once that was done, I just started to frame in a wall and I'm using material that is just three quarter of an inch by one and a half inch because this really doesn't need anything heavier. This is not a load bearing wall. Now, if you watched all the previous videos, then you might remember how I built the pocket door at the rear from recycled sauna cedar paneling and that is what I'm using here as well to glue up some panels for the bathroom door. They're just a quarter of inch thick, which will make for a super light door. And I take advantage here of the super flat countertop and its surrounding walls to help me with the glue up.
Now that I had an idea where the walls and the door is going to be, I could measure how much space I had for the shower pan. Well, it turned out to be 30 inch by 30 and 3 quarter of an inch and all of that with a really weird angle on one side, which meant there was no way that I just could buy a shower pan. I had to make my own. Now I started by using a piece of 3 eighths of an inch plywood as a base and I cut a hole in it for a drain and that had to be off-center uh, just to avoid the floor joist underneath. By cutting an even bigger hole in this little piece here, I created sort of a recess to accept the drain. And as you can see here, I have already the sidewalls in place. I just used 1x4 material for that. And for the next step, I needed to cut a whole bunch of wedges to create a slope so the water actually runs towards the drain. A common slope for a shower pen is uh, one quarter of an inch per foot. Now, because there's a good chance that the boat is not going to be always perfectly level, I just double this up to half an inch per foot, just to make sure the water can drain effectively. In order to create the slope, I needed a whole bunch of wedges with the right angle, and for that I'm using the simple jig here. It's really just a piece of plywood with a strip of wood glued to it, and it allows me to push this board through the table saw in an angle. And with all the pieces cut now, I could finish the assembly. Now it is time for some epoxy work and I'm using the leftover epoxy from when I constructed the hull. And to start with I soaked all the surfaces with one coat of pure epoxy. And the next step I mixed epoxy with the Vest System 406 colloidal silica filler to create a peanut butter like consistency and I used that to fill the gaps between the plywood and to put a bead along the inner edge. Now sadly I forgot to hit the record button for the next step, which I'm still really mad about, but I basically used two layers of chopped strand fiberglass mat to build up a strong waterproof layer, and here I'm in the process of giving the entire surface a sanding. My plan is not to smoothen out everything perfectly, that would just take forever, but rather to roughen up the surface so I can get a good mechanical bond to the next layer. And for the next layer I use an epoxy filler that is easy to sand and it kind of looks like I'm using a lot here but it's really just a super thin layer. And yeah, like I said, the stuff was easy to sand even though it took a lot of hand sanding, especially in the corners. And I repeated this entire process about three times until I was happy with the result. Well, up to this point, everything went pretty well, and I thought I can finish this project by using this uh, little bottle of white pigments here from Best System that I had kicking around, just to create a pure final epoxy coat. So I brushed it on, and I used a little torch to get rid of all those tiny air bubbles, and then it became pretty clear that one coat is not going to do it. So I did a second one the same way, but that was still not enough. And unfortunately, then I ran out of epoxy. And of course, I could have ordered more, but that would have just taken forever. So I decided to use this product here that I found in a local hardware store. This kit is meant to restore a bathtub or a sink. And it's essentially nothing else than pigmented epoxy, thinned down heavily to create a paint-like consistency. But I really have to say this stuff worked great. I needed three coats to get full coverage and because of the amount of thinner in it, it does fume a lot. So you definitely want to do this in a well ventilated area.
That's all I got for now. I wish I would have gotten more done, but this shower pen here just took forever. It's actually a prime example how it can backfire if you don't follow any plans, because if I would have planned out this entire floor here a little bit better, then I could have built it already on the right size so it can accept a standard shower pen from the hardware store, and that would have saved me a ton of time. And don't think the building my own shower pen saved me a ton of money because good quality plywood those days is not cheap and the epoxy and fiberglass isn't cheap either. Anyways, it's dealt with it now. How about I end this video by estimating the current rate? I haven't done this for a while and it would be smart to keep an eye on that while I'm building the interior here and keep adding stuff. I'm using the same setup as in part 4 of this build and I also use the same formula to estimate the weight. The scale stopped somewhere around 496 kg and I just rounded this up to 500 kg. Now 500 kg times 2 equals 1000 kg and if I add now the 30%, which again is quite generous I think, then I end up at 1300 kg. Well that's quite a difference to the last measurement, but it makes sense since I added a lot to this since then. I definitely will have to keep the weight in mind as I keep building this boat. Alright, well thank you for watching and I will see you the next time.